Welcome to another design video. Today I will be talking about mental models. And this is really, not to exaggerating, the most important concept in game design. It's in fact also a concept that professional game designers, men, many professional game designers don't really know about or understand properly, despite having worked a lot in the field. So now I'm going to learn you secret stuff. I think that most have a sort of basic understanding about this, but the subject is sort of deeper than what you might think at first glance and very, very important thing going onward in game design. That said, let's get to it. So the first thing to understand is that perception doesn't work as we intuitively think about it. We think that there is a world outside of us and that world gets somehow transported into our heads by some process. That's sort of how you think about it. You look at, look around yourself right now, you're really thinking, right, that that world, the screen or whatever, like look around you from whatever you're watching this and like that just gets transported into your head. That is not how reality works. What's out there is unknown, but, but like really we are not sure what the real world is like. And there are various things, say light rays that bounce off or bounce off is again, not perhaps what actually happens, but somehow it enters our eyes or whatever sensory system we're currently using. There it gets through a very complicated process and from that various elements get extracted. So the word tree, um, the concept of it having leaves, some sort of basic shape, and all of that combines, again, in a process, we're not sure how it actually happens. <laughs> a lot of mysteries here on the line at all, into a mental imagery of a tree. And that mental imagery is not just an image in your head. That is not the right way to think about it, even though I'm like drawing it as a mental image. That's really a bunch of concepts in your head that comes together to form what we call a mental imagery, but it's much, much more complex. It's, a, it's like a collection of elements that build this whole thing up. So it's, it's sort of hard to get across, but I can sort of get across like this. So if you haven't seen this before, this is just dots. You're like, what am I looking at? What you're looking at, I'm gonna show you now, and blow your mind hopefully a little bit if you understand this, is that this is a dog. So this is a dog's head. There is the like, uh, um, the dog has its nose on the ground. Here's the leg, here's another leg, here's the belly, here's the back leg. And then you have this sort of back around something like that. Do you see it now? So otherwise pause the video until you see it because once you see it, you cannot unsee it. I have just provided you with some sort of outside context, or you did it yourself. Perhaps you sort of formed the imagery as you looked, about, uh, looked around it, well, like here's a tree or something like that as well. And now you've gone from dots, because honestly, this is not a dog. This is not a picture of a dog. This is dots. But in your mind right now, it is a dog. It's interesting, right? Um, here is a crudely drawn cat. But this is not a cat. This is <laughs> this is um this is a circle with some triangular states perhaps I, that like I could draw but I get them back. I probably that is my crudely drawn cat. Um and, and this is not a cat, but but in your mind it's a cat right now. Eh? Um I mean this is a cat. Psych this is not a cat. This is a picture of a cat. So, so again, you're fooled yourself. Uh, there is there is nothing out there. You 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 made a mental imagery of some sort of iconography you're seeing on your screen. So you you take this icon, and you conjure up various concepts. So 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 a, a cat has a tail. It has certain behaviors. It goes meow, um, and it has a fur that's very soft. 
uh, and so on. So, so there's all of these concepts that when you see this image, even if that's this photo, or if it's this uh, shitty drawing, um, all of those conjure up concepts in your head that just goes around uh, a singular concept, which is the concept of cat. Now, let's go to games. So, in our sort of naive understanding of a game is that the, the player is playing whatever they're seeing on the screen. By now, you should be at least thinking that. Perhaps that's not true, and it's not. So the player gets input and then processes that input in their mind and build up their own mental imagery of whatever it is they're playing. And then they provide um, input to that, so, or they're provided output from the game, input into their own head, and they prov the player provides input, and you have a little loop forming here of inputs and outputs, and that builds up a mental imagery. So while you might see some shitty pixels, just as you saw a shitty cat drawing, you're actually in your head conjuring up the idea that, oh, I am an adventurer avoiding crocodiles. But in reality, well, like, there's this bunch of pixels. But you are assigning it various concepts that sort of form an image, like this icon, or whatever you want to call it, whatever is on the screen, that allows you to form a mental imagery that goes way beyond it. And similar with these two things, they're all of a sudden a crocodile. So what's happening here is that you have this icon or whatever I call it, um, and, and, and and there's mechanics that goes into this, like you have to avoid it and so on. Then there's a story. This the story here can be just, as I talked about in a previous video, it, it can be the drawing on the arcade cabinet, uh, showing you know, like what you're supposed to be looking at. And, and, and all of that factors in. There, there's also like various systemic things like A causes B. You walk into the mouth of the crocodile, you die. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That, that, that forms a minergy. And in the end, we're thinking about this thing here as that thing. And it's a very interesting process. I, I think you should really you should like take a moment to pause and just consider how weird this is. It's not obvious if, if you knew nothing about media at all. It's, it's weird that this works at all. And it's an extremely potent thing um, to be having. So let's talk a little bit about other ways in which these mental models manifest themselves. So take the game of chess. So chess is like you have a board and uh, it's, a, it's a grid, there's pieces, they have rules. So the chess player like looks at the board and then has all of these um, rules in their head. And there's obviously the, the input uh, or the output from the chess board is the current configuration along with the rules that you learned of chess. And then also like thinking about the opponent, what is the opponent going to be doing and so on and so forth. And that forms a mental model of this. And it's very interesting thinking about how this grows over time. So if you have a noob, that, that would be me. I, I, I'm not good at chess. I go through and think about every single position. So like, oh, the pawn is there, the knight is there, the king is there. And then I try to like have all of those together and form some plan based around that. But a pro doesn't think like that. A pro sees the entire configuration of chess pieces as some sort of substance. Like a certain configuration in their head conjures up an image, just like the image of my crudely drawn cat conjures up an imagery of cat in your head. The pro chess player conjures up um, some sort of imagery of that. And you can, you, you've done experiment to show this. this really is the case. So for instance, pro chess players are really good at remembering positions, 
if they are valid positions. They go back at remembering positions just like the noob if it's just random nonsense. So similarly to you would be able to say that's a cat drawing, that's a dog drawing, and because you as a human are very good at that, just like the chess, uh, the pro chess player. Um, but if, if it's just random noise, you, you, you wouldn't be able to like remember what that was. So uh, sort of, and this is a mental model that, that is constructed. So in a way, um, what the brain is doing and is constantly doing is trying to optimize and make sense of things. The, the, the brain simply doesn't store or think about this in the abstract way of, oh, there's like a, 45 degree bend, like all of those details. It doesn't think about that. It's more things like crocodile. And then it all already has in your head like a <clears throat> stored notion of what crocodile-ness means. And similarly with a chessboard, all of this takes training, but it's still interesting because in a game, that training is what happens. So it takes a chessboard and it makes that into some sort of substantial thing. So what happens in your brain is that you take this sort of complex thing and the brain processes it into something more simplistic and nice something it can work with so i mean if you build up a character by some sort of the like picasso like this is not a picasso i'm not pretending i draw a picasso right now but some sort of cubism art and you parse that through the brain it goes uh oh, uh it's 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 some sort of character that stands in some sort of pose. And, and this is what it's gonna remember. It's not gonna remember the cubisms, where are the cubes in this drawing? So let's talk a little bit about this in terms of how, how, how this factors into a game. So say that now the player is standing like here in front of a cave opening. And the, the player is now, so if you think about it as some might do as Oh, it's a system. So, so, so player is gonna, like we think about this mechanically. That's not how a player is gonna think about it. We can, we can easily see this because there's not gonna be any player that sort of probes this like a simulation where you go, oh, there was a wall here. <laughs> uh, oops, didn't know that. And then bam, 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 slams. And sort of like as some sort of, this is what our Roomba, you know, your your vacuum cleaning robot would do. That would just do, do, do because this is a, it, it it has no eyes, it has no sensory input, it has no conceptual things in its brain, so it's just gonna bump around, go through. A human being, which has concepts, is gonna look at this image and go, hmm, I can make a three D model of this in my head, and you can plan a path, and you go like this. You never touch the walls. So, so, so the game hasn't told you, like, think about this. The game has not told you that that's walls, that that's things that's going to break you. You, you. I mean, it could be the case that you could walk like that. But unless the, the player learns that as a, oh, it's a hack, like there's a no clip mode or whatever, um, they're going to take this path. Because that's that's the sensible path to take, giving the information. So what you do is that you, you're giving this imagery that conjures up concepts in your head that already exist, or that again might change as you play the game. And then you're like, oh, it's a cave. I know this, I know caves. And then you can, by doing that, you can form a mental model of what this cave looks like in sort of like, in, in a simplistic sense. It's sort of like the chess player. You, you don't want to remember every bit of stone or everything like that. You're like, okay, okay, okay. How can I, how can I picture this in my head that sort of makes more sense? Um, so what happens is that you have an input that, which is cave energy. We, 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 we build concepts around that. Like I know about caves, I know about bumping into walls, that you'd avoid bumping into walls. I know how to plan paths. And so, so you make that into a model and we test it. And, 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 and in this case, we tested it by trying to walk this path. It worked. Woo! 
model was an absolute success. So we're going to keep to this model until it breaks down for some reason, or there's other advantages in, in like not doing it. So, so we're like, if, if we're very bored, and this is exactly what we want to be thinking about, because if, if the player is like ah, such a long path and, and, and they're running from a monster or like trying to get from a to B in the fastest possible manner, if they start figuring out that, Ooh, I could walk like that, then um, <laughs> they're going to learn that the model is going to get updated with that information because it's, the brain is trying to optimize things. So it's going to be, you know, optimizing in terms of reaching goals and of having the simplest possible model in their head. So this has ramifications for games, especially horror games is a very, very good example. So you have an, uh, uh, a scenario in a game where the player is standing next to a wall and we play a sound. So under the hood in the game, a sound is played. That's all that happens, nothing more. But a player now starts building concepts around this thing that they hear a noise and they start building concept. This is based around story and what the stakes are, what the player knows about this. So in the best case, or actually probably in the first case, the player's going to assume there is in fact a monster there. There is in fact a monster. That, that's a sort of naive interpretation of, of, of the situation. Um, and then the player is going to like test this. They, they might go into the room and check if something is actually there, etc. How, 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 how does the things change uh, when, when, when that happens and so on. And so, 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 so they're going to get more input. You use that to update your model and then you're going to test the model. And if in, in the, in the bad case, which happens a lot in horror games, actually, is that the player might find out, oh, it's a speaker playing a noise. And, and, and they find out that through updating the model. And this is what we want to avoid. This is the mental model of the situation. Again, note, and I'm going to get back to this, the input hasn't changed, but the player's mental model of the situation has. So you have this idea of if, if you encounter a monster, um, just work with the analogy a little bit more, it could be that you're actually facing this ominous, real threat where you're not really sure what it is, but it's very, very dangerous. That's what we want to keep. What we don't want to keep about it as, oh, it's just like a, a cylindric collider, which some sort of monster image on it that goes on a specific rail. And that's a really bad mental model in a horror game to, to have the player because it's, it's no longer as interesting. That's not the experience we want the player to have, right? So once we encounter this, monster icon, we're going to start with this like very foggy concept. So, like we have no idea what this is. Like if that's a sound, if it's an actual model or anything like that. So a player is going to start out with something like that. And then they're going to be very, very quickly start forming these concepts around this icon. An icon, again, doesn't have to be an actual icon, can be a model, can be a sound, can be whatever. And <clears throat> Then um, what we don't want is that this leads to like the, the player starts like removing things like an actual monster and just thinking about it as a, um, a cylinder traveling on the rails. That's bad. What we want is that we want to we want to remove that concept. <clears throat> Sorry. And what we want instead is for the player to retain these things, these concepts that are an, an actual monster. So that's what we want to go for. So when you're making a game, you really have, and, and this is, again, the, the main thing. When you're making a horror game, right? You want this. You do not want that. So you have like an idea image, right? That's the image you want the, mo the mental model you want the player to have. And then there's this abstract thing because the monster might actually be a cylinder traveling on rails. That, that's the actual image that that actually happening. But you don't want that, that. You don't want that. So you're sort of trying to put up a barrier between these things. So the player might get information from this, but we want them to think about the game like that. And this is 
the problem of game design in many cases. This is like the fundamental thing about making a game. So you have this sort of choice of the player having these two different ideas in their head. Like obviously there's an endless amount of variations on this. I'm just making them two different things, but it's it's all on a multi-dimensional uh, um, range. So, um, and, and, and think about it. So, so if they have this sort of more, if, if their mental model is more aligned with your core idea of what you want to do, players given output X, the player might give input A. And again, think about it's like traversing a cave. They're, they're going on the cave like that. Um, they're actually avoiding the walls. So that's what we want. Um, but then if they think about it like this, which is like the mechanical or whatever it is, and um, say that the cave walls don't have, for some reason, they, they don't have collision, um, which is a sort of stupid example, but it would be like, think about the, um, the audio cue being played behind the wall. And then they might actually give input B. And the output from the game was exactly the same, but the player behaves very differently because of their mental model. So a game is really like, like, like playing a game for the player is having this black box in front of them and trying to figure that out and building a mental model of that that sort of makes sense and optimizes this. And by doing, uh, in doing so, forming all these sort of concepts and like, no, that was a bad one. I'm not gonna, gonna remove that. Oh, this was a good one. I'm gonna reinforce that. So your job as a game designer is you have this idea this idea called a like the a idea is what we have in our head and as a designers you want to get this across into the player's head this is game design this is game design um and and you have what you have is that you, the player has this black box to play with uh, and that gives certain output and it provides certain input and in doing so you want this to get across you want to you want by this is your tool, right? This is your toolbox in order to get whatever idea you have, be that a space shooter where you want the player to behave certain ways or a horror game where you want the player to feel certain emotions. You want to transport that in the black box, this, um, this um, loop here, um, that uh, the process involving the black box, which is a game and a brain in the player's mind. And you want that interaction there to give rise to that. So is there a final idea just to get across? So, so, so say you have the player looks through a window and there is some image behind that. So that, that image, it's, let's just assume it's a 2D image. Um, there is a game here where the player looks at that and sees, ooh, that's actual force. That is an actual forest. And in their mind, they like, oh, I could, I could take this path through the forest. I could go there. The trees have volume. They have all of these concepts um, together. Or, oh, it's a picture of a forest. And there's nothing more to it. It's just a pretty picture. The player optimizes away any sort of conceptual aspects of this. and. I mean, this is fine, I guess, in some cases, but you need to you need to make sure what what do you want from this? What are you striving towards? And again, this is by understanding mental models. Not until you really understand that you, you can't really work with this. So that's all I had today. Hope it was useful. See you all next time.